Number 64, the heating coils in a hair dryer are 0.8 centimeters in diameter, have a combined length of one meter and a total of 400 turns. Letter A, what is their total self-inductance assuming they act like a single solenoid? All right, so we have a formula here that talks about the inductance of a solenoid and it is equal to then the permeability of free space multiplied by the number of turns squared multiplied by the cross-sectional area of that solenoid divided then by the length of the solenoid, right? So if we have to find their total self-inductance, we got to find L. In order to find L, we got to know all these variables. And fortunately, we do, right? So the permeability of free space is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th. We've seen that before. The total number of turns here is 400. You got to square it. The cross-sectional area then is going to be, it told us, 8 centimeters in diameter. You know we need that in meters. Well, we need that in meters, and we got to take half of it. Because the area of a circle, which that's what a solenoid is, right? It's a series of circular loops, is going to be pi times the radius. So half of that diameter, but then we got to convert that into meters. So that's why I multiply by 10 to the minus 2. Don't forget to square it. And then divide it then by the length. It's one meter. So good. We don't really have to technically divide it mathematically. So there's going to be 4 pi times, oops, that's 4e, 4 pi. All right, times 10 to the minus 7th, multiplied then by 400 squared, multiplied then by pi, multiplied then by 0.4 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. And here we have a value of about 1.01 .01 times 10 to the minus 5th, all right, and that's in Henry's. All right, that's Henry. Henry. Sounds like such a happy name. Henry. All right, so letter B. Uh, how much energy, how much energy is stored uh, in them when 6 amps flows? So we have the energy stored in an, in an inductor will be equal to 1 half multiplied by the uh, inductance all right, and multiplied then by the current that's flowing through it squared. So basically, we're going to take this inductance we just found of 1.01 .01 times 10 to the minus fifth, plug in then the current. It's saying how much energy is flowing is stored when it uh, six amps flows, right? So that's the current. Square it, and voila, we can basically now find uh, the value. So 0.5 multiplied by 1.01. .01, actually. Let's use the exact answer. So 0.5 multiplied by the prior answer, multiplied them by 6 squared. And I got a syntax error. So one second. 0.5 times then second. Um, let me not second answer that. That was the problem. 0.5 times my answer from before, times 6 squared. All right. So this now works out to be 1.82 times 10 to the minus fourth. And it's energy, so you know that's joules. Great. Now, how about letter C? What what average EMF opposes <clears throat> shutting them off if this is done in five milliseconds, which is one fourth of a blah blah blah? That's just noise. So, anytime you got to find average EMF, it is this formula: the average EMF that is induced. All right, that will oppose, let's say, shutting something off, because the change in current as you shut it off actually creates its own magnetic field that acts on the wire itself, right? Self-inductance is equal to then the inductance multiplied by the change in current divided by the change in time over which the current is changing. Formula no normally has a negative sign here, but we're just going to get rid of it uh, because we're just finding the magnitude. The sign just tells us kind of like, oh, that it opposes it, but it already said that it opposes it, so we don't have to label the sign. So EMF is going to be that uh, inductance we found, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the minus fifth, multiplied by the current was 6 amps, Divided by the time, that's in milliseconds. You know we need that in seconds, so multiply that by 10 to the minus 3. And go about it. So here, let's take that inductance, multiply it by 6, divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 3. And it's now going to work out to a value of about 1.21 times 10 to the minus uh, 2 volts. All right. So little itty bitty, bitty 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 voltage. But that's basically piddlins. All right. But um, you know, when you turn off your hair dryer, it, it is a there is some force that is opposing you turning it off. But it's so small that you don't even feel it. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that helps. Uh, I appreciate it very much. If uh, if you can subscribe and like, that'd be awesome. And check out some more of our videos. We got a whole bunch of solved problems, not only for physics, but also for chemistry, math. 
and there's more coming. Take care.